Hello everybody! On the surface, the subject of dropping your trailer to store sounds pretty simple, but every day, all over the country, drivers are doing it wrong. Anybody that's worked here more than a few weeks knows exactly what I'm talking about. Drivers often get a message on their tablet asking if anyone is in the vicinity of store XYZ, stating, we need a trailer moved from the grocery dock to the GM dock or vice versa. Have I ever done it? Almost. Technically, you haven't done it wrong until you leave the store and head down the road. So, how does this happen? Well, first of all, most Walmart store drop and hooks do not require you to speak with anybody. Second, most stores have separate GM and grocery docks, sometimes on opposite sides of the building. Often, due to many reasons, the docks are poorly marked or not marked at all. Third, Dry grocery loads are hauled in the same trailers as GM freight. It's easy to forget what type of load is inside the trailer. All general merchandise loads except neighborhood marks are hand stacked, one box at a time, very similar to the way FedEx ground loads 28 foot package vans. Many stores have the fast unloading system. It's a powered conveyor with automated barcode scanning and sorting. Trailers need to be on specific doors for this system to work properly. Today we're going to get back to some basic training. It's impossible to cover every situation at thousands of stores that may look very similar from the front, but are very different on the backside. These are my suggestions and the procedures I follow. Before departing the DC, check the freight bills for attached notes and your in-cab device for specific instructions about your destination. Look at the proposed navigation routing and entrance point to the store. At this point, I like to use my own device to bring up a satellite image of the store. You can usually determine the store layout with these tips. Look for an abundance of air conditioner units on the rooftop, or a bunch of circles in a rectangular pattern along the exterior walls. These are cooling units for the freezers and are located on the grocery side. You might also see red, orange, or yellow painted lines to indicate the curbside pickup, which is also on the grocery side. The GM docks are usually on the same end of the building as the Tire and Lube Express lanes. You may see the curved yellow lines guiding drivers to the garage bays as confirmation. Carefully evaluate your store approach if it might benefit you to enter from a different direction. Ideally, you want to enter in a way that minimizes unsafe, awkward maneuvers such as congested areas, curb hopping, U-turns, blind corners, and obstructions or tree trimming. If in doubt, default to Walmart's recommended routing. So once you've determined you're on the correct side of the building, just go and take an empty door, right? Well, not so fast. Are there any special instructions on your bill of lading or your computer load assignment? How about the navigation notes for that store? Are there any signs on the building or the dock door? Is there a cardboard bale or a stack of pallets in front of an unusable or undesirable door? Does that store use the FAST system? In most cases, looking at the shape of the back room in relation to the building and the dock levelers can help determine the best dock doors without having to go inside. Since the FAST system is about 100 feet long, if the back room is very shallow from the dock doors, then the preferred dock door would be the farthest door from the main building. The second door from the end should also be okay. The third door from the end would most likely be a fail. This is because the powered conveyor can't work in the shape of an S. If you have a store with three GM doors and the back room for the trailer dock looks just like part of the building, most likely the FAST system is lined up with the middle dock and either door next to it should be okay. Finally, if you have a grocery load to deliver, most store associates prefer to use the powered dock levelers versus the manual edge of dock levelers, especially if they are using a non-powered pallet jack. Unfortunately, at neighborhood markets, they happen to be the dock very close to the building. Accurate driving with some extra pull-ups can get you safely in these docks without hitting anything. Each type of dock leveler can be easily identified from the exterior of the building. The main takeaway from this discussion is to put the trailer on the correct GM or grocery dock. Until we meet again, if in doubt, check it out.